YouTube. So um, this is a little a different of a filming spot for me, but where I live is currently infested with termites. And so I thought I'd have to film in a different location and it proved to be such a lovely day outside. I thought why not film out here? So um, and sorry if you hear Andy barking or doing anything out of the ordinary. Again, she's out here with me and she's playing with one of her pine cones again. So she's having a marvelous time as well. Uh, so this video is to talk about what I'm currently reading. And um, I haven't done one of these videos for about six months now. Um, I really, um, I really miss doing them because sometimes I don't feel like I have enough to talk about with a book on uh, to film a full review, or because I, um, or because I want to talk about all of them. But um, I know it's going to take me such a long time to finish the books um, that I might not have enough energy to film a review. Either way, let's get started. So the first book that I have is The Conference of the Birds, and this is an abridged copy of the original poem, and this is illustrated as well, and it's done by Peter Sis. And this is absolutely beautifully done. Uh, let's look at some of the illustrations now, shall we? Like that. Um, and so in this story, the... Um, uh, one man is turned into a bird and he calls all the birds of the world together and the and the birds of the world are distressed because um, the world is in despair and there is suffering and famine and war and they begin to think what can we do to solve this question and so they must go and ask a wise man to um, and for what the solution to the problem is and um, so this is what the man who's been turned into a bird says when he calls them. Birds, look at the troubles happening in our world. Anarchy, discontent, upheaval, desperate fights over territory, water, and food, poisoned air, unhappiness. I fear we are lost. We must do something. I've seen the world. I know many secrets. Listen to me. I know of a king who has all of the answers. We must go and find him. And it's about the obstacles that they have to go through and the things that they learn along the way as they find, um, as they continue to um, find their way to the king. And um, the illustrations, again, are just stunning. They're, um, I thought that... Um, uh, the original poem is something that I've wanted to read for a while, and um, but I thought that reading an abridged copy would give me a good idea if it would be something that I would be interested in reading more about, so that hopefully I just wouldn't, um, if I didn't enjoy it, I wouldn't waste all the time and effort reading something that I hated, because <laughs> um, I have done that before. It's very hard for me to uh, DNF a book because I just, I get invested and then I see it as a challenge. Um, the next book that I have here is The Tale of Genji by Lady Murasaki. And the, um, again, whoo, this book is kind of heavy. <laughs> um, and uh, again, I've talked about this book on my channel, but it is uh, the world's first novel and it is iconic in Japanese literature. And I'm really enjoying it so far. It is actually very, um, uh, a very approachable read and it's very relatable too which I didn't expect to have much in common with you know 11th century Japanese nobility but um, it's quite funny because some of the characters are joking around or not joking around but they're asking things and I'm paraphrasing here but um, and they're saying things like does she like me or does she like like me? And um, so it seems that some things are more universal than uh, than we originally thought. Um, and again, I'm not that far. I'm buddy reading this with Jess from Rebel Reads and uh, the Drunken Lub Drunken Library. I can say English words, and um, it's really great um, talking about it with them because we were able to analyze it from a feminist perspective. And um, some of and some people in our group have more experience with Japanese culture than I do, and so it, that get, provides some uh, cultural context. So the next book that I have is actually a series of books, and it is the Kristin Lavin's Daughter series by Sigrid Unset. So the first book is The Wreath. Um, they have each book has several alternate names based on the translation. So the wreath, it also goes by the bridal wreath. The second book is the Mistress of Huxabee. 
How's it be? There we go. Um, and the third book is The Cross. And yes, I realize that could, could potentially be confusing because these are three really different editions. Um, but from where I am in the United States, it's kind of hard to get your hands on uh, Kristen Lovins' daughter books. I don't know why, because they are a Nobel Prize winning, uh, written by a Nobel Prize winning author, but they just aren't very popular here. Um, so uh, I gave this the first book three out of five stars, and I'm currently reading the second. But honestly, I've been kind of disappointed, <laughs> which um, which I was also disappointed by my own disappointment, <laughs> um, because I really wanted to love this series. And uh, Independent People has been compared to the Christian Lovenstadter series, and I loved Independent People. Uh, that's a book iconic of Icelandic literature. And so I thought I was going to love this. And um, this was written by a 1920s Norwegian author, and uh, it takes place in 14th century Norway. Uh, and I love historical fiction, and I love literature, and so I thought this would be right up my alley. And um, instead, <laughs> I have been disappointed. The pacing of the novels is incredibly uh, disconcerting because um, she will go on for lengths about one particular encounter or about one, one um, like a protagonist character traits or something like that, and then when someone major to the plot dies, it'll just be glossed over within a sentence or two. And so if you blink, you can miss it. <laughs> um, so that's very frustrating. As well, too, um, there's not really any, there's no, re there's not really any secondary characters, um, and so th there's only one plot line going along, and that plot line really has no plot line. <laughs> um, I'm not a sucker, or I'm not the kind of person who enjoys thrillers, and so I enjoy books that are generally slow-paced, but this is too slow-paced even for me, um, which says something. Um, it's the first book is basically just Kristen beating herself up for sleeping with some, with a man who she's in love with and asking for eternal forgiveness. Um, and the second book is so far her um, still feel, even though she is now married to the man, she is still feeling terrible about it. And it's been 15 years later. Um, and uh, fortunately, some other things have now happened. Um, but, and even though I am halfway through this novel, we are still being introduced into new characters, which can be a bit frustrating. But I am not going to quit this series. I am going to continue on because um, I have hope that it can improve. And because I am learning a lot about um, uh, 14th century Norway, which I do enjoy. Um, there, this book is a lot of things, but it is not historically inaccurate. So I have that to look forward to. So again, Kristen Lovin's daughter, The Wreath, The Mistress of Huzzaby, and The Cross. So um, that's what I'm currently reading. And I recognize that, um, that none of this is probably very relatable, but you know, hopefully you enjoyed it. So let me know what you are currently reading and what you guys have been up to as well. I'm sorry I've been absent, but you know what? Sometimes life happens. Andy! Come here! Come on! Allow me to show you off to the internet. <gasps> Look at how cute she is. Andy says bye! <laughs> Doi!